blessing today. Put your hands together for Jesus. You know something? Whenever we clap like that, the two ears of the devil are on this side, on this side, where we do la la. Praise the Lord. The devil is so unhappy because we are clapping his ears and making him deaf. We bring him under our feet and he will never rise again. Close your eyes and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. It's a day of double portion. It's a day of double blessing. It's a day of double authority. It's a day of double power. And Lord, we're praying that you will rain your blessings down upon all your people today in Jesus' name. You bring every problem under our feet. Every sickness under our feet. Every attack under our feet every affliction on our feet. And Lord, we bring the devil and evil spirits and the works of the devil down. They will never rise again in Jesus' name. Your people have come to you today expecting a double portion from you. And we pray you'll grant us the double portion in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you open the heart of everyone to receive the word of God. And faith will come through this word into every heart in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you will crush every problem, destroy every work of the devil from everybody's life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. We're looking at Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. The story here you need to understand. There were disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. These disciples had come to the Lord Jesus. When the Lord said, Come, they came. When the Lord said, Seek, they sat. When the Lord said, hear my word, they heard. When the Lord said, do this, they did it. When the Lord said, go, they went. And these disciples that always carried out the word of Christ. Come, sit, listen, rise, go. Everything he told them, they did. They submitted to his word. They submitted to his will. 
and they did exactly what he told them to do the time he told them to do it. And they discovered that as long as you are walking in the way of obedience, you are walking in the way of power. They discovered as long as you are submissive like a disciple, that you will have the power and the authority of a master. This is what we need to learn. That those disciples that obeyed the Lord, the Lord gave them power and authority. So these 70 disciples were sent out. Go, the Lord had said. And they went. And they did what he told them to do. And then in verse 17, and the seventh year returned again of joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Satan will always fall. In the presence of Christ, Satan will always fall in the presence of disciples that carry out the watch of Christ, the watch of the Master, without question. And it was after the testimony, after the declaration, that behold, I see Satan falling as like it fell suddenly from heaven. It was after that declaration that Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power. I give unto you authority. I give unto you exactly the same power I have. To bring the devil down, I trust Father to you. I give that to you. And it is the part to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. There is a lot in that place that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to his own disciples. There is a lot in that place that is available for every child of God. There is a lot in that place that assures us of victory and dominion. That tells us we're more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. That is what gives us spiritual dominion. In Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That is, they overcame the devil, they overcame the serpent spirit, they overcame Satan. They overcame the adversary. They overcame the accuser of the brethren. They overcame the one that is walking up and down to and fro to do evil in the world. They overcame the originator of sickness and the originator of uh, affliction. They, they overcame the one that brings yoke and that brings curse. They overcame the one that causes tears and sorrows in our lives. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. That means then, as we look at those verses of Scripture, 
we have power. I said we have power. We have authority. And we have spiritual dominion. And today, we're going to manifest the use of that power. Every yoke in your life is broken. Every problem in your life is solved. Every attack of the devil in your life is cancelled. And all those things that have been moving in your family, from grandfather to your father, to yourself, to your children, this very day, you will walk on them. You'll be victorious in Jesus' name. When we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who has power to oppose. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we will walk on these serpents and this copia. Victory is ours in Jesus' name. Because number one, there is power. Number two, there is dominion. And that power is by you there. That power will walk in your life there. Your tears are wiped away. Your sorrow is taken away. All those manipulations of the devil, they are cancelled in Jesus' name. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the privilege of submissive disciples. The privilege of the submissive disciples. Number two, the promise of spiritual dominion. The promise of spiritual dominion. Number three, power over stubborn demons and diseases. I like that. Power over stubborn demons. You know, the demon that says, I will not go out. I will ruin your life. I will destroy you. No matter any prayer warrior you go to, I am here, I am here. Since you are born, I'll be with you. I will make you die. I come to you in the name, in the authority, in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and every stubborn demon and every stubborn disease. I come against you and I command, go out in Jesus' name. Three points to look at before we pray. Number one, the privilege of submissive disciples. What can the Lord do with the disciple that is not submissive? When God, when Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, what will Jesus do with the people that refuse to come? When the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God, and hearing by the word of God, and blessed are your ears if you hear. What will Jesus do with the people that are not submissive enough to hear the word of God? What will Jesus do with a disciple when he says go and they refuse to go? If they are not submissive, what can Jesus do with them? The disciples who have read about here in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he called the 70 disciples. He paired them up two by two. He said, you, you will go with this person. You, you will go with this person. What if this fellow said, uh-uh, 
I don't talk to this fellow. I don't go with this fellow. We don't have anything to do together. Jesus, you made a mistake. I cannot travel with this, and I cannot walk with him, so I'm not going to obey. What will Jesus do up there? Those 70 were divided into 35 pairs, two by two by two. And he said, you this pair, that's the place to go. Here, that's the place to go. You two, that's the place to go. What sheep? They said, uh-uh, I don't like that village. I cannot go there. Send me to another place. What will Jesus do with them? The reason Jesus gave them power is because they were submissive disciples. Here, look at us here today. We are hearing the word of God. And it's the word of power. And it's the word of authority. It is when you submit to that word, the privilege that Jesus gave to those disciples will become yours. How can the Lord give you the privilege? If you say, I will do what I will do. I will go where I will go. I will drink what I will drink. I will tell lies when I want to tell lies. I will fight when I want to fight. I will rebel when I want to rebel. Nobody can control my life. I am deep alive, but that does not mean that does not mean that everything they say I'm going to obey. Stand up, I stand up, sit down, I sit down, go, I go, come, I come. Ah, uh -uh. not me. I am not like that. I am tough. These disciples that receive power, that had a great privilege, they were submissive disciples. After they had gone, after they went to the place the Lord sent them, and they got the victory there. Ah, they did not say, look at it, I have power already. I am going to establish my own ministry in this place. Jesus has sent me. What if they remained over there to establish their own private ministry? The ministry of John and Co. The ministry of James and Co. The ministry of Ngozi and family. What if they remained over there and they did not come back to the Lord Jesus? This privilege that they had, they will not have. I want you to mark it down today. The people that have the authority, the people that have the power, and the people that do great exploits, the people that receive great miracles, they are the submissive disciples. And today that power is near you. I said today that power is near you. All that the Lord is looking for, that attitude of submission, that attitude of obedience, that attitude that comes to you and then the self within, the stubbornness within, the rebellion within, the Lord removes it and you say, Lord, here am I. I am submissive to your will and the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the authority of the name of Jesus will walk in your mouth and sicknesses will leave your life and days will be another great day for you in Jesus' name. Now you see the people that carry on the work of God. And the power is being transferred and transmitted into their lives. 
They are the people that are submissive to the word of the Lord. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. What kind of power? The power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And the power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. If I understand the words of Jesus very well, when he said nothing shall by any means hurt you, witches cannot hurt you. I said witches cannot hurt you. Wizards cannot hurt you. Traditional worshippers cannot hurt you. Masquerades cannot hurt you. The people that put charcoal in their tongue, in their mouth, they, too, 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 too. they cannot hurt you. All these people that you see in your dream, they cannot hurt you. Every serpent, every scorpion, every evil power, you will match on them. Today, today, before we leave this place, every problem in your mind, every problem in your head, every problem in your body, they will come under your feet, you will stand up, you will be marching like a soldier. In Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth, shall, thou shalt loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Who are these people? That Jesus said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Let me remind you who they are. He saw them by the seaside. And he called them, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets. And they followed him. What's that? Submission. These were submissive disciples. And then he saw Matthew by the wayside. He was doing his work. He was getting money. And Jesus said, leave everything and follow me. And Matthew stood up and he followed him. At another time, he preached a particular message. And the people said, this is a hard saying. Who can receive this? And then many people went away. And Jesus said, will you also go away? Ah, they said, no. We have surrendered our lives to the Lord. To whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. We will follow you to the end. What do you call that? A submission? These were submissive disciples. Let me tell you again. The people that say, I am a man of my mind. What I don't like, I will not do. The doctrine I don't like, I will not accept. If it is hard, count me out. I'm not there. They never have this power. They never have this key. But these submissive disciples, Jesus said unto them, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He sent us to preach salvation, we're preaching it. He sent us to preach sanctification, we're preaching it. He told us to preach holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Whether they accept or they don't accept, preach it and we're doing it. He told us to serve him and we're serving him. 
and because we are submissive to his word and submissive to his will he gives unto us the keys of the kingdom of heaven and then he said whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven that key is in the hand of submissive disciples which kind of disciple are you i said which kind of disciple are you rebellious disciples disobedient disciples backsliding disciples which kind are you my sister my brother here which kind are you if the submissive disciples are there they wave that hand at me like this you will overcome the devil you will overcome your problems the key to your breakthrough is in your hand already and you will use the key you will open the door and you will have the breakthrough and success and prosperity and power in jesus name in um, john chapter 14 verse 12 John chapter 14 verse 12 Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. This, again, is a privilege of submissive disciples. The people that went away in chapter 6 of John, they are no more here now. The Lord never allowed the people that went away from him to retain his power, to retain the key, and to hold the key. As they went away, they lost their power, they lost the privilege, they lost the key. The people that remained with him to the very end, they are the people he told, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you keep on believing in me, the works I do ye shall do, and greater works than ye shall ye do, because I go to the Father on your behalf. Jesus is said what he did before he will do again here he healed the sick before he will do it again here he delivered the oppressed before he will do it again here the works he did before will be done here in Jesus name point number two the promise of spiritual dominion the promise of spiritual dominion it tells us in Romans chapter 16 Romans chapter 16 I'm reading from verse 20 and the God of peace shall boot Satan under your feet shortly the God of peace and is a God of power and it's a God of promise. And it is a God of goodness. And it's a God of authority. And it's a God with him. All things are possible. The God of all possibilities. The one that has power that no Satan, no devil, no demon, no evil speak and challenge. And it says the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly the Lord will do it whatever the devil has done in your life the Lord will reverse it 
whatever stronghold the devil has built in your life and in your family, your business, though that stronghold will crumble this Jesus name. You have overcome. I said you have overcome. This very day, in the name of the Lord, by the power of the Lord, because of the faithfulness of God, we have overcome in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In all these things we are more than conquerors. It also say they are more than conquerors. But we, we who are here, I said those of us who are here, we are more than conquerors. Tell the person by your side, I am more than a conqueror. Don't close your mouth, so that this is not the time to keep quiet. I say, you say to the person by your side, look at them eyeball to eyeball, face to face, and tell everyone there, I am more than a conqueror. Praise the Lord. In all these things, in the village and in the city, and when people are sick all around, and when all the problems are rising up here and there, and when the challenges are increasing, and when the devil and demons are jumping up and down, when they come in the day, and they come in the dream, when they come through women, and they come through men, when they come in the business, and the problems come in the family, anywhere the problems come, every brother and every sister, every boy and every girl, praise the Lord, we are more than conquerors. I said we're more than conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ who loves us. He has given us spiritual dominion already. And we have power and authority already. And nothing will be able to conquer you in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Stop there for a moment. There are some people that use carnal weapons. And the weapons they try to use, they are not of the Holy Ghost. The weapons they try to use are not of Jesus Christ. The methods they try to use, they are not of the Lord. And those weapons cannot effectively work against Satan. Any method they taught you in the white garment in the white garment church before you came here, you try to pray like that, it will not work. Any recitation, repetition that they taught you in that other assembly where you used to go, and they will say repeat this seven times, fourteen times, twenty-one times. And you are repeating it as if you are doing incantation. That one is carnal. It will not work. Yeah. 
the methods that they use in, uh, you know, among some people, they have discovered if you do like this and do like this, those people, they'll be afraid of you. They will calm down. Their hands will be beating down. If you use that method, that work doesn't work against demons. It doesn't work against sickness. It doesn't work against Satan. If you do all those carnal things, you remain in your problem. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. If you come into the church and you try to use the weapons of politicians, it will not work. All those are carnal weapons. Immediately you get into the, to the gate of the kingdom. The kingdom of God. All the methods, all the strategies, all the practices that you are using in the world, you drop them at the gate of the kingdom, and then you enter to the kingdom of God. Because those kind of weapons don't work. Another thing is this. When you come into the kingdom of God, and you mix carnal weapons and spiritual weapons, the carnal weapons will neutralize the power of the spiritual weapon. When you mix good water with poisoned water, poisoned liquid, that poisoned liquid will destroy, the, will, will, will spoil that good water. You'll not be able to drink it. So mixing carnal weapons with spiritual weapons will make you a defeated person because everything will just be upside down and nothing will work you will look at your life and say but i've gone to the retreat and i prayed their prayer and i did everything and look at all these problems in my life because of the presence and the use and the practice of carnal weapons in your life For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's why we come here today. Because we have spiritual weapon. And we're not mixing a spiritual weapon with carnal weapons. And we're going to destroy every work of the devil. And we're going to bring down every thought that rises against the purpose and the plan of God in our lives. Well, we look at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 12. Mark 11 verse 12. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if I play, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves, for it was, for the time of feast was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee, he had forever, and his disciples heard it.
you see the problem here the fig tree was not bringing forth fruit as it should and then jesus said in a single sentence no man eat fruit of this tree anymore what then happened verse 20 and in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and peter calling to remembrance says unto him master behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away Behold, the tree which thou cursed is withered away. When something is growing, but it is not useful, it is destructive, then we speak against it and it dries away. Cancer has tentacles and roots that is going to the body to destroy the cells of the body. We we'll speak the word of God against that cancer, the cancer will dry away. Fibroid is occupying the place where the baby that you need to give birth to should occupy. And the fibroid is saying, I am here. No, no baby is allowed to stay here. We speak the word against the fibroid and the fibroid will dry away. So Peter called to remembrance and said, Master, behold, the fig tree that you have caused is withered away. And Jesus answered, says unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So, so your problems go away, and it will go. Because that's the word the Lord has told us, that whosoever shall say, unto this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and you don't doubt in your heart but you believe that those things which you have said will come to pass you will have whatsoever you have said god has given us this authority and power i come to point number three Power over stubborn demons and diseases. Now, let me tell you something. Here we need to really learn. You know, I, I know many people that read the word of God, but they don't learn. And when I, whenever I go to the Bible, I learn. And I want to pass some of the instruction and learning what I've learned in the Bible to you. When Jesus was uh, met by the centurion, that centurion said, My servant is vexed, is tormented, is troubled, but at home, I want you to help me heal and deliver my servant. And then Jesus said, I will come home with you. And I will heal your servant. Oh, and he said, you don't need to come home with me. He said, but just speak the word. And I know that your word carries authority. To ask me, how do I know that? Because I am a man under authority. I am submissive to the authority above me. Because of that, those who are under me, they submit to my authority too. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to that one, come, and he comes. 
I've discovered the principle when I submit to authority, then those under me will also submit to me. Why do I submit? Because if I do not submit to the authority above me, those who are under me will not submit to me. And Lord Jesus, I've been watching you. You are submissive to the authority of your father. Because of that, sickness and evil spirit will submit to your authority. Submission begets submission. The other side of that principle is this. Stubborn demons will also remain stubborn when you are stubborn. When you are submissive, those evil spirits will be submissive to you. You mention the name of Jesus. And because you are submissive to the higher authority, all those demons will be submissive to you. Ah, ah, but if you are stubborn and you are never submissive to the authority above you, if you are stubborn, the stubborn devils also will say, uh, uh, if you are stubborn, why are you telling me not to be stubborn? I will be stubborn too. Sicknesses remain stubborn in stubborn people. Demons remain stubborn in stubborn people. You watch them. The people that say, ah, the pastor does not know me. Ah, the pastor wants to deal with me and talk to me as he's dealing with uh, the people in west of, western part of Nigeria. Ah, the pastor doesn't know anything. I will show the pastor I am stubborn. But you are hurting yourself. Because of this principle in the word of God. That stubborn demons remain stubborn is stubborn people. Stubborn disease remains stubborn is stubborn people. But when you make up your mind, I'm going to sub be submissive to the word of God. I'm a submissive disciple. I'm following the Lord. I'm serving the Lord. What he tells me to do, I will do. Then I know when I come in the name of Jesus, every stubborn demon will flee away in Jesus' name. And every stubborn disease will get away from my life because I am one of the submissive disciples of Christ. In Matthew chapter 17, Matthew chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Give me a good amen. It says, When you have faith in the Lord, and there is nothing disturbing your faith, contaminating your faith, spoiling your faith, corroding your faith. And you have pure faith in the Lord. Unshakable faith in the Lord. With that faith, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, the mountain in your life, the mountain in your family, the mountain in your business, the mountain of your children. I say to that mountain, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hands to yonder place. 
and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you nothing shall be impossible unto you can i remind you of something don't that watch nothing we have met it somewhere else today in the message look at this nothing shall by any means hurt you and nothing shall be impossible unto you join those two things together all things are possible now the devil cannot play any trick in your life anymore disease cannot remain there anymore evil powers cannot remain there anymore nothing shall by any means hurt you and nothing shall be impossible unto you are you ready i said are you ready in psalm 91 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most i shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will see of the Lord is my refuge, is my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. A thousand shall fall at thy side. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. I said it shall not come near thee. Almighty God said it shall not come near thee. Jesus, the lover of your soul, said it shall not come near thee, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways, they shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone, thou shalt tread on the lion and the adder. Are you still there? I said, Are you still there? Let me see you tread on the serpents on the adder. You do that sitting down? How do you tread on serpents on the adder? And tread on your sickness and tread on your infirmity and tread on your problem and tread on the devil and tread on the serpent spirit and tread on the witchcraft and tread on the tradition and tread on the barrenness and tread upon all the problems that followed you here thou shalt tread on the lion and the adder the young lion and the and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet they are under your feet from now on. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, I thank you. Problems are under my feet. Sicknesses under my feet. Demons under my feet. Evil spirit under my feet. Affliction under my feet. All the attacks under my feet. I am a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I am victorious. I cannot, I cannot be defeated again. I cannot be defeated again. I am more than a conqueror. The Lord has made it to overcome. The Lord has given you the victory. The Lord has given you the victory. Open your mouth. Sickness is under my feet. Affliction under my feet. Witchcraft under my feet. 
curls under my feet, yoke under my feet, problems under my feet, mountains under my feet. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am healed. I am healed. I am delivered. My problems are gone. No more sickness. No more disease. No more demonic power. No more affliction. I am free. And he has healed me of all my diseases. Tell the Lord, accept it. Receive it. And it is yours. It is yours. If you are a submissive disciple, it is yours. If you are an obedient disciple, it is yours. If you are no more using canal weapons, victory is yours. If you are not a stubborn church goer, if you are submissive and you are yielded to the Lord, then every problem will submit. Every demon will submit. Every disease will submit. Every evil power will submit. You will have the victory. Your sickness is gone in Jesus' name. Mountains are removed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's pray now. You catch the miracle that is coming your way. Say it's coming my way. I will catch it now. Get ready, now it's coming. Get ready, it's coming. Get ready, it's coming. When you have, when you hear the final amen, you check up, that thing will not be there again. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the double blessing. I pray, O oh Lord, upon everyone here that you will shower your blessings in Jesus' name. Sickness and disease, I come against you. And I command that disease, I command that sickness, come out in Jesus' name. That sickness in your brain, that torment in your brain, that fire burning in your brain, I command right now, come out in Jesus' name. I command that spirit of epilepsy. Come out in Jesus' name. That high blood pressure be healed in Jesus' name. The stroke and the trembling of the body. I command right now, the healing virtue of the Lord will touch you. Be healed in Jesus' name. The swelling in your tummy, the swelling in your body, and the air near, I pray right now, be removed in Jesus' name. The swelling in the leg, I command right now, be removed in Jesus' name.
every sickness and every pain in your body you are healed by the stripes of jesus i pray right now that healing be manifested in jesus name Lord, I pray for those who are barren, they are not barren anymore. The fibroid in them, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, give them miracle children now to replace the fibroid in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord will touch your business, will touch the work of your hand. Success and prosperity will follow you in Jesus' name. Lord, touch those who are blind. Touch those who are lame. Touch those who are deaf and dumb. And remove their infirmities in Jesus' name. Every yoke in their lives, every curse in their lives, remove every yoke and every curse in Jesus' name. In every one, for everyone, destroy the works of the devil. I pray, Lord, there will be miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Confirm your blessing and miracle upon every life now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. It is done. It is done. We have got it. We have received from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Check up yourself. The miracle is there already. 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 Check it up. You'll see the miracle there.